thought to be a spy recruiter. It did nothing but strain an already fraught relationship. If true, the disclosure could impact the safety of undercover operatives and threaten relationships with our allies abroad. Former double agent for the FBI, Nabi Jamali, gives his take on this in his New York Daily News op-ed entitled, The President's Breach Through the Eyes of a Former Spy Against Russia. And joining me now is Nabi Jamali, author of How to Catch a Russian Spy, and his former supervisor, former FBI supervisory special agent, Scott Olson. Thank you both for being here. Uh, and Nabi, you wrote uh, in the Daily News, uh, essentially from the point of view of the people who do this work, why what uh, the President did in that Oval Office meeting was so dangerous. Could you summarize for us? Absolutely. Look, it, all this is based on trust. And, you know, even if you don't disclose sources and methods or you don't disclose very, very specific details, the danger comes in that one can assemble, just using open source information, what actually happened. So as a result, you know, you could have someone come back and say, OK, we now know that in this cell, there is an informant, there is an undercover, you know, and that is what's so dangerous. And look, all this is based on trust. As, as Scott can tell you, you know, you have to convince someone to do something that is sometimes incredibly dangerous. They have to go in, into a place that they're not supposed to be and spy for another country. And, you know, when you betray that and you put those people in jeopardy, you not only risk that life, you risk the ability to recruit, you risk the ability to retain people who are doing this. And, you know, so much of this is just built on trust and word of mouth, and it, it certainly sets things back. And, and one does not expect that the President of the United States, the Commander-in-Chief, would be the one who would put uh, people in jeopardy in that way. Let's listen to Senator Ben Sass, um, who was quite strong on this on CNN on Tuesday, talking about that very thing. The American people need to understand why the direct disclosure of source and me sources and methods or something that could lead to the discovery of our sources is such a big deal because sources and methods are the lifeblood of the intelligence community. The world is a dangerous and broken place and we need spies out there fighting for American interests. And, you know, Scott, uh, David Frum wrote in the, who is the editor at The Atlantic, he was even more stark about it. He said American military and intelligence agencies must assume from now on that the president of the United States is a security risk. He cannot be trusted to protect state secrets. If you were still trying to recruit the next Navi Jamali to work for the United States, would you be concerned that the president of the United States poses the biggest risk to their security? Well, the president and uh, every other official that uses intelligence certainly has impact uh, on the operational world. You have to remember, uh, like Naveed, uh, all intelligence assets, they're, they're civilians. They're not trained spies. They are being uh, coached by uh, the, the people that worked for me uh, uh, several years ago, uh, coached uh, Naveed. Uh, but they're civilians, and they don't understand this world, and they are rightfully nervous to all of a sudden be a part of this world. and when they come back to you with, hey, I just saw something in the news, is this a problem? It becomes a problem simply because they view it as one. So how intelligence is used, separate from disclosing sources and methods, how intelligence is used really impacts the operational environment because you're dealing with civilians. Yeah, and Clint Watts, who is, is you know, no civilian, he worked for the, uh, he was an agent with the FBI, Naveed. This is um, how he put it uh, back on March 30th when he talked about sort of the Russia angle of it when he's testified with the, before the Senate Intelligence Committee. Take a listen. Is Russia's meddling in our 2016 elections proof the United States is dealing with a nation that is acting in its own warlike manner? Yes. Uh, my biggest concern right now is I don't know what the American stance is on Russia and who's going to take care of me. I mean, after years in the Army and the FBI, uh, working in the intel communities today, I'm going to walk out of here and ain't nobody going to be covering my back. And Naveed, if you were still, you know, working as an undercover, working, um, sort of trying to convince the Russians that you are spying on their side, would you today be concerned that the current commander in chief um, would not be watching your back? Absolutely. And, and Scott's being really modest I mean, when he talks about coaching. That is absolutely true. And in fact, you know, there are a lot of times when I met with his guys and, and I was reading the news and I would say, look, this is happening. This concerns me. And their, their job in many cases was to allay my fears. Um, you know, it, we, it, is, it is a big thing. And trust is, we would always call it Scott and, and, and his team, that we'd call it the circle of trust. And there was just so few people that knew what I was doing, knew my name. And you just have to trust them. And something as, as simple, potentially, as innocuous as something that shows up in the news has major ramifications in the ability for the FBI or the CIA to convince people like me to go do this. And, you know, especially if it's a foreign government, if you can imagine how diff difficult it is to get them to share information, it's, 
you know, that is, it does really absolutely have impact. And, and you know, Scott, not just um, the Oval Office meeting, which I think alarmed everyone, people's hair was on fire, but even going back to the things that Donald Trump has said about the intelligence community, the things he's tweeted, here are a couple of examples. Back on January 5th, the media lies to make it look like I'm against intelligence, I'm in fact a big fan, okay. Um, but on a January 11th, he tweeted, intelligence agencies should never have allowed this fake news to leak into the public. One last shot at me, are we living in Nazi Germany? Essentially comparing members of the intelligence committee to Nazis. That kind of thing, what does that do to the morale of the people that you used to train or the people you used to work with? It's a difficult job, um, and it's a difficult enough job uh, that uh, you really need the support uh, of the chain of command. Um, the chain of command in the FBI is uniformly supportive. What we're really talking about here is the intelligence consumer, somebody who's outside the FBI that you don't have control over, but really can impact your operational environment. And Navid is exactly correct. You know, we spend a lot of time coaching civilians who are doing work for their country, but not on the payroll. And we're telling them it's critical that it be kept private and don't tell your spouse, don't tell your kids, don't tell anybody. And then they're looking at something that's being essentially blasted from the hilltops and they circle back around and they're asking a lot of legitimate, difficult questions that you have to address, but as long as you're addressing those, you're not able to focus on the mission. So it really impacts focus. It's part of the environment we work in, uh, and so we're good at it, but it really is an unnecessary distraction, and it's better if that kind of thing doesn't happen for the intelligence community. It really is. And David, you know, when this happened, it's not that Donald Trump, you know, gave away uh, in, in basically an intelligence operation that we were working on. It was the Israelis' information, not ours, to give out in that Oval Office meeting. What did you make of it when H.R. McMaster, who's been seen as one of the grown-ups, one of the sort of um, few sort of, you know, sort of solid people in the administration, backed up uh, what the president did in that Oval Office meeting? <clears throat> well, I think that it was a very carefully phrased um, statement. I mean, he said sources and methods, and while, again, parts in the legal language that may have been true, the reality is the identifying information was there. So I, f I felt it was a very sort of neutral statement that sort of supported the president, but kind of didn't. So, yeah, you know, I, I go back to what, uh, what Scott said. This has an impact. Yeah, and uh, we will see what we get in the next FBI director, whether or not they can improve it. Naveed Jamal will be back in our next hour. Scott Olson, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. And up next, impeachment is back on the table. More AM Joy after the break. You're going to be hanging out in here, so if you need anything, text me. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not quite sure what that... Do you play?